Hello, everyone. My name is Masatoshi Yamaguchi. Oh, sorry. I worked in Japan Groundwater Development, and it is a construction company. For example, construction of snow melting facility, like this. And digging well, a uh, main business. This photo shows snow melting facility. Groundwater is used as heat source of this system. Instead of groundwater, shallow geothermal energy is adapted in Japan. We construct vertical type heat exchangers as well as well. Today, I would like to explain the effective way for heat exchanger construction. This is my presentation at Ryan. First, I would like to talk about the background. Then, the numerical model will explain. Next, the validation of numerical model will confirm. To compare the TRT data and the numerical result. After that, I would like to describe some case study results. Summer efficiency will be described in this section. At the end, I would like to summarize my presentation. Uh, this, is, this photo shows typical boring situation in Japan. The geological structures in Japan are ma many and very complex with abundance of groundwater. In order to collapse the borehole wall, muddy water or grout is circulated during the boring operation. After boring operation, casing pipe is installed into the borehole to keep wall collapse and pump up the groundwater in order to wash out muddy water, like this way, where it's constructed. Recent years, in case of digging vertical type heat exchanger well, special boring machine is used because of using load pipes it keeps borehole wall from collapsing during the boring operation. So mud water becomes useless. But during the drilling operation, the mud, water, mud in ground dissolved and became mud water. So before the installation of U2, washing out is most important operation. In my presentation, thermal effect of the mud wall will be evaluated. Next, I would like to explain the numerical model. The model is able to consider the effect of mud wall existence. Figure one shows the numerical model. Dimensions of XYZ, XYZ uh, 10 meter and 10 meter and 100 meter depths. The top face is ground surface, the center of the model domain, borehole shapes, and heat exchanger pipe shapes are reappeared. In order to estimate the insulation effect of the mud wall, mud wall is considered along the borehole at Outer borehole, the ground is assumed to be made of homogeneous and isotropic material. Groundwater flow was given uh, from east to west as a gradient, 0 0.02 me meter per 10 meter. East and west borders hydraulic potential were given as constant value. 
initial temperature distribution was uniform. And constant temperature, 15 degrees Celsius, was set at east border phase. Another phase was initiated. Hydraulic parameters and thermal properties showed table one. The groundwater flow velocity around the borehole is given by different hydraulic conductivity. Next, I would like to describe the validification of numerical model and some case studies. Uh, this is a TRT situation uh, photos. In order to evaluate uh, the capacity of borehole heat exchanger, thermal response test is executed. Using this data, numerical model validi validification was confirmed. And uh, this uh, graph shows the TRT data inlet to YouTube temperature and outlet temperature. And this is a flow rate change. Measured injured inlet temperature and circulated volume of heat exchanger are given as a boundary conditions. And we can simulate the outlet temperature of U2. Compare the measured outlet temperature change and calculated one. It can get good agreement. The numerical model valid validification was confirmed. Then, I would like to describe the simulation. One, an interrupt operation. For the purpose of extracting the ground source heat, cold water uh, at seven degrees Celsius was supplied to the YouTube continuously. And two, cycle operation. Af an office air conditioning system is not running all day, but for a limited time period. We simulated operation uh, 6 a.m. to 18 p.m. running for one month. Constant heat extraction about 4.2 kilowatt was assumed. Figure four shows outlet temperature changes and power outlet temperature under the uninterrupted heat exchanger operation with mud wall. In this case, this indicates, indicates that the outlet temperature and power outlet does not depend on the groundwater flow velocity. On the other hand, the case without mud wall shows figure five. For the faster ground, groundwater flow velocity, a slightly higher outlet temperature and power outlet are simulated. When there's no mud wall, the groundwater comes into direct contact with the YouTube and therefore more heat exchange can occur when compared to the model with the mud wall. Uh, figure six shows cycle operation with mud wall. Regarding the daily operation, figure six shows that regardless of mud wall existence, outlet temperature decreases every day as time elapsed. The difference of the temperature drop of the outlet water was shown according to the groundwater flow velocity. On the other hand, the case without mud wall shows figure seven. The changing trend is similar to case with mud wall, but in this case, when the groundwater flow velocity is faster, the temperature drop is smaller and temperature recovery becomes rapidly. 
uh, figure eight shows the ground, ground temperature distribution along y direction. y equals zero is borehole center, and dashed line means YouTube. Groundwater flows along x direction from this side on the depth. When groundwater flows at a velocity zero meter per year, there is no difference in ground temperature distribution between with and without a mud wall. In this case, heat transfer is governed by heat conduction. However, when groundwater flow at velocity of 20 meter per year, temperature in the borehole is much higher without a mud wall than with mud wall. The temperature at the center of the borehole is the lowest. And low temperature regions are limited at around the borehole. Several case temperature counter maps were shown in figure 10. The case of groundwater flow velocity zero meter. Temperature distribution spread like a concentric circle. But the groundwater flow exists. Low temperature region spread down the stream. Next. I would like to explain the thermal efficiency. Coefficient of performance, COP, is the point to evaluate the heat pump's capacity. In heating operation, high temperature return from ground is able to get high heating COP. For example, figure 11 shows the relationship between heating COP and heat pump chilled water outer temperature. The case of 10 degrees Celsius is superior to the case of 5 degrees Celsius. And the supply side temperature became lower. Heating COP became increased. Figure 12 shows the heating COP according to the groundwater flow, velocity, and supply temperature. The case of groundwater flow velocity is zero meter per year. There is no difference between with and without case. There has a large groundwater flow velocity. Heating COP is increased, especially the case without mud wall, about 5% higher than the case with mud wall. Next, I would like to move on to the final part of my presentation, the summary. Here, I have summarized the key point of my presentation. First. The groundwater flow velocity is small. Thermal energy movement is dom dominated by heat conduction. Second, if the mud wall remained, it brings thermal influence and it becomes thermal resistance. When a, when a vertical borehole is built, it is recommended to thoroughly wash out any mud on the circumstances wall in order to make the ground heat extraction system as efficient as possible. Thank you very much.